got Craig King with me uh, today. Um, most of the field work. And I'm Mark Rogers. I'm the partner in charge on this. Um, these financial statements are June 30th, 2013. Uh, that's your year end. Uh, and the notes, I mean, the, the financial statements, there's 154 pages to the, to the financial statements. Um, they're fairly cumbersome at best to go through. Um, they start with a uh, basic set of financial statements, uh, governmental, a uh, government-wide financial statement, which encompasses all the governmental funds and, and then the um, business type funds and then the component units that are required to be included in your financial statements. Um, those are found on pages 23 through 28. Then it gets into the governmental fund types. Um, and then on to the proprietary fund, the agency fund, and then the notes to the financial statement from 40 to 73. I'm not, I'm not uh, planning on going through all these. What I have done is set up, um, giving you a separate little letter here and it's got all of them broken down um, the actual uh, data behind it um, the way your statements are set up you've got one general fund that you operate most of your activity through you've got 10 special revenue funds you've got six capital funds and you've got four proprietary funds and four internal service funds. Um, the general fund, the, the definition, if you look at the notes of the financial statement, the definition of the general fund is whatever's not in all the other funds in the general fund. And that's basically how it works. Um, if it's not a special purpose uh, revenue source, or if it's not a proprietary fund source, it's going to all be encompassed in the general fund. So the 10 special um, revenue funds are um, I think they're on page 4 of the little handout. And you can see that there are the special services, the commissary, <coughs> seizures, hotel, motel tax, intergovernmental grants, General operations, drug abuse, E911, victims assistance, and law library. The total revenue for those for 2013 was 9,781,000. The expenditures were 10,103,000. Uh, as you can tell, most of the activity came from the E911, the special services, and the intergovernmental grants. Uh, special services was three million four seventy one. Intergovernmental grant one million five forty two. E nine one one was two million two twenty three. In what page are you on? Are you on I'm sorry. Um, you're reading page three of the handout. Page four. I'm sorry. Page four of the handout. Page Right, right there at the top, special revenues. Okay. Okay. So overall, 2013, the special revenues had revenues over expenditures of $176,000. <clears throat> Any questions on special revenue? No, I'm kind of jumping around a little bit, but there's a little bit of method to the math. So. <laughs> In regards to all the library, uh, we have seen forty-seven thousand revenue. Right. Uh, where, where is this from? Those are collected through the court and remitted to the the law library. That's a those are add-on add fees. Add on fees. Add on fees. They're add-on fees to fines, and then the spirit board judges oversee the law library. They they allow that. 
started to cold heart. And you see there's a in that wall library the fund balance is three hundred and thirty three thousand dollars. So, you know, even though this one year they overexpended what their revenues are, overall they're way ahead. <clears throat> That brings us down to the fund balance, total fund balance of the special revenue is $2,287,000. Um, and I do appreciate any comments, questions. This is supposed to be interactive. So, um, so two point two is more carry over to the potential. <coughs> That's right. The mid year, this is a mid year review, or is this all of This is all of 2013 fiscal year. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, next down is capital projects. Capital projects total revenue: um, twenty-two million six fifty-eight. Total expenditures: nineteen million four forty. Uh, for a total fund balance of nine million seven fifty-two. The majority of the activity is in the SPLOS fund. Um, and if you take that one SPLOS, uh, SPLOS 6, and you look at that one, their total revenue is 21 million seven, uh, 372, their expenditures are 17 million <coughs> 680, and their total revenue of expenditures was 3 million 691. Um, that's the majority of the activity in, in there. The way those flaws work is you're gonna get your money in and then your expenditures are gonna trickle out later. If you look at flaws five right beside it, you can see that the total revenue was um, $3,000 this past year. Total expenditures were $910,000. So there was a expenditures over revenue uh, $907,000 for the year, but their fund balance is still $2,750,000. So that number will continue to drain down until it goes completely away. Are most of those balances associated with projects that are already on the books for the municipalities? Yes, we're, we're down to about three cities. We did send them out an update for December. Um, and encourage them to try to go in and spend their funds because it's just better to spend your own spots first. The county has a little bit of capital money that Chad is working on. It feels like he'll have spent all of it by the end of the year. We're in essence trying to say, let's spend the oldest money first and move this off the books. Well, they, um, should, they should have allocated projects that need right. to be accomplished with that fund. Right. <laughs> road projects, you can always pull a road project back to your oldest money. It doesn't have to come out of the new. Now with SPLOS 6, that is only county money. It's SPLOS 6 was the first SPLOS where the money was sent directly to the cities when it came in. So SPLOS 6 is only county money, but as of this month, the final bond payments being made, the final transfers to the general fund that was owed back have been made. So in essence, SPLOS 6 will be shut down. Uh, before the end of the year, also. I have a question about SPLOS 5. Um, that revenue is uh, 3281. Is that just a something? We're no longer collecting SPLOS 5. Right. How's there a revenue? In fact, that's interesting. 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 That's the no, under the old law, before SPLOS 6, you had to hold money and they had to provide documentation. In essence, you were responsible for how they spent it. Under the new law of SPLOS 6, you're not responsible at all. The money <coughs> goes right to them as soon as it comes in. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Back to the municipalities that have money to spend. Is there any type of uh, I guess, uh, deadlines or anything uh, in stone where they have to use the money? Because when I think about supplies five, I think like they took my you know, years ago. Probably. They, I don't believe.
believe it was an enactment, but there was an attempt to look at legislation that so many years after the spa said that the money had to be used. And that's one of the reasons we're encouraging the cities to try to use their funds, uh, not only because of that legislation attempt, but because of public perception of why we're sitting on this. <coughs> um, what they're doing is I think they're using their SWA 6 money when they could be using their SWA 5 we're trying to say, let's use the oldest money first. Um, and sometimes they want to hold it for a particular project, but it's no problem to take a road project and use the oldest money and then switch that other project back to the new money. And most of this um, is related to something I believe the city of Austin is holding on. I, that's my understanding. I'm not exactly clear on what it is. Okay. Um, put the page over. This is their enterprise funds. Uh, this is the water sewer fund, the san uh, landfill special lighting, and the sanitation. Uh, this is the final year for the sanitation. Uh, so. You can see that its net position at the end of the year is zero. So that's the final year on it. Total revenues for the prior period funds were uh, 5 million 916. Expenses were 5 million 300,000. <coughs> non operating expenses were 469,000. Operating transfers out was 334,000. The change in net position was negative. 186,000 overall. Um, again, the majority of the activity comes in the water and sewers with uh, 4,938,000 in revenue, 4,302,000 in expenses. Change in net position for the water and sewer was negative 98,000. The ending uh, net position. Uh, total is 32,161,000. Again, uh, the water sewer had 32,037,000 of that. Did you use any uh, <coughs> major indicators in such a loss for our landfill? The landfill? Uh, that's not an operational field. It's actually that some solid waste hostings coming in from the private landfill that they have here. So it's not operational. So some of that money was utilized elsewhere to transfer now, but not a large expenditure there. Um, because there's really no other, uh, at this point, there's no other use for the landfill hostings. But it's not an actual landfill the county's running. I know it's an operating income while it's like 389000 Yeah, 389000 that's, that's income. That's income. And yeah. then the transfer to ours was 428000 And uh, of course, the lighting tax district fell down with the meeting the other day, and I greatly appreciate that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because it needed to be addressed. I encourage you to follow through with your plans. <laughs> we'll move swiftly when we move. <laughs> and all God's children said, Hallelujah. <laughs> Any other questions on the criteria funds? Um, the next group is the internal service funds. The internal service run funds operate a lot like the proprietary funds in that they're operated like businesses, but they're purely for, um, they're in business for the rest of the county to be used. The, um, so you got your equipment uh, fund, your health insurance, your workers' comp, your fleet management. Total revenues for uh, 2013 was 9,089,000. Uh, total operating expenses were 9,441. Uh, net loss total for the year was $355,000 and net position at the end of the year was $1,034,000.
majority of that came into health insurance, $5,261,000 in revenue, and the fleet manager, uh, $3,042,000. Mark on equipment and fleet manager, is this, is this predominantly cash revenue coming out, or is this also approved depreciation and things like that based into it? Yes. Okay. And on the health fund, this will come up when we get to the general fund. There was about half a million dollar more in claims last year for health insurance. Um, typically what we do, we find that none of the money's been contributed. We take care of that year end because we can't just let it lie there as a deficit. And that impacted the general fund as well as all of the departments in trying to make that adjustment. We didn't quite get it to zero, but we got this close to we can't appreciate all health insurance. No. <laughs> <laughs> now if you'll flip back to page uh, three, this is the general fund. Uh, it shows the 2013 actual, the 2013 budget, and the 2012 <coughs> actual. Uh, total revenue for 2013 in the general fund was 46,943. Budgeted was 47,688. Total expenditures for the general fund were 47,571,000. The total budget was 47, 47,648,000. Net change in fund balance was a negative 668,000. And the, the ending fund balance for the year was 16,764. Obviously, if you look at this, your, your revenues <coughs> were under budget uh, for the year. Um, by $745,000, uh, you held your expenditures, they were under budget $77,000 for the year. Um, that ended the uh, general fund with an uh, amount under the budget by $668,000. Thank all the hard work of taxpayers for the revenue, and we thank Joe for the expenses. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't deserve that this year, did Well, unless I'm, unless I'm using new math, it's not a bad thing a year. Well, we, we projected revenue growth at what? 3%? Nothing. Didn't we, didn't we project it flat last year? Okay. And it came out less than flat. Well, <laughs> you're so later on and you're sitting there reading that 148 pages at home and you have any questions feel free to give me a call and um, I'm open to discussing it at any time. Mark I, I had a question here on your on your cover letter it said we have issued an unqualified auditor's report. Right. Does it cost more to get a qualified auditor to do this? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you don't want to qualify. That, that means a clean opinion. So you got the one you wanted. Yeah. Mark, are you and Craig uh, speak not necessarily numerically, but just in general, have a 
Really going through um, the last year, if you look at the numbers, you, you did end up like on the general fund with a loss for the year, but um, I think generally speaking, you ended up pretty good for the year. I mean, keeping the expenses down when you knew your revenue was going to come in to what you, know, what you had budgeted, but I think it could have been a lot worse. And the general fund takes the hit on a bunch of things that, you know, in those internal service funds, and if that health insurance, you know, if you've got a big hit on the health insurance, it gets back to the general fund. So it's not like, you know, controlling those costs is a, is a big deal. Uh, coming in that close to the actual cost is pretty remarkable. Well, in relationship to other governmental entities that uh, all and doing some type of analysis for the commission so they can get a comparison. They've got the numbers and see what those represent. And in comparison to other entities, what's your assessment? I think we're doing good um, because obviously the economy has hit a lot of counties and cities and you know holding our own like we have really it's really remarkable. Craig, you comment on the process of working with the staff and how the different departments, elected officials and or staff that you need to work with to obtain this information. Did you have problems? Was everything okay? Everything pretty much went went smooth. I mean between Stephanie and Harrison you know, it's it's easy to get information and then um, we have our staff go out to each of the elected officials in each department and um, have them go and they actually go out there. So uh, not really any problems we, we had this year. Can't think of anything that... Harrison, will you comment uh, for the commission on your role and how you assist in this as a financial consultant compared to Stephanie as the director? So that how have you helped complete the information for the office? Basically, what I do is create an electronic package of everything they're going to need because I'm an auditor too and I'm auditing county governments and I know exactly what they need in detail. So rather than them coming down here and having to create hours of documentation, I go on ahead and close it out, set it up. If there are any problems, we post entries like that health insurance. And basically have everything prepped for them when they come in through the audit. Now, of course, there's always going to be questions, but then I'm building those. On the other hand, Stephanie's got a full-time job, like she'll be in budget for a couple of months here, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> There's just a whole lot else going on day to day, and there's a very small staff here at the county in terms of funding. It's very small. So um, basically, at the end of the year and going into July, I just basically make sure we got everything covered, all accounts, have some documentation, and then I'm collecting other, there's a ton of other outside data that has to be collected, as well as coordinating with these component unit auditors and trying to make sure they get their own reports in so the county can get their own it out. Um, that's almost full time for the year. That's what we're getting uh, <coughs> to as well. Is, do you see anything from your observation of going through the audit? Do you see any kind of accounting practices or anything like that that we could improve on from, from the finance department or is what? What you were able to see in the documentation that you have and the processes are we in good shape from those standpoints? From what we saw, yeah, yeah, yeah. in very good shape. Processes it worked very well. Good. Very well. Harrison, the other day uh, you had mentioned that we had un unanticipated health insurance claims of a half million dollars. That would have shifted almost the entire thing back up a break even on the budget and Revenues would have still been down, but that was 
that would have pushed us in close right on top of the budget there, right? <coughs> you would have been much closer. That's why I say what I said about the expenses. Right. That's a lot of things being considered. That's yeah. one factor that none of us can control. It's right. It's almost completely uncontrollable. And I will say the change you recently <laughs> made to your health plan and your provider that's going to have a dramatic effect because I've already seen what Blue Cross Blue Shield can do in other counties. So I'm expecting to see claims to at least flatten, if not go down, but I would hope they would flatten. Keep in mind, medical costs has been rising at twice the inflationary rate. And that's continuing, so it makes it very difficult. Well, and that's where we appreciate staff being proactive on the wellness program right. to try to mitigate some of those expenses that you can't codify right. so easily. But it only takes two or three heart attacks, bypass surgery, a cancer. It doesn't take much. You're off and running. And it's unfortunate, but you know, it's like it's happening. I'd like to know any, any uh, <coughs> uh, possible recommendations for you know, driving Oak Hill Road County. And, you know, we know where we are now, and know where we're trying to go. Uh, it shut down the state legislature. <laughs> <laughs> um, more and the unfunded mandates. Yeah, they, are, they have really eroded the revenues, and they put in mandated more expenditures through lots of legislation. The only other thing is we've got to get the economy overall back on track, and you've got to get your tax base up because that's the major revenue stream. Um, it would be nice to get local option sales tax growing as it did before the recession, and it was always growing in double digits. That's a lot of money. And so, but, you know, if the reality is right now it's just not happening. It's down 4% here. It's down 4% across the state. So, um, the, basically, getting the local economy going is about the only thing you've got really going for. And bringing in additional businesses and industrial companies, which will expand the base. And that trickles out, of course, more jobs, more companies. It just, it just expands on itself. Let me, add, let me add to that, um, again, as I, had, as I alluded to earlier, uh, just the fact that as tough as times are and as tight as the, the budget has been and, and this process, and this snapshot of 2013, again, Mr. Pritchard and his staff are to be commended for the fact that they were able to bring it in under budget on the expenditure. There's not a lot that we can do, again, to control revenue very difficult situation but the thing that we are responsible for that we can do the best job that we possibly can do is on our areas of expenditures and uh, you know uh, I've been here now a year and two months and um, as I've said before what I have seen from the standpoint of the way the management handles the finances of this county and the way the processes are set up you're not going to find anything in that. Thank you very much Thank you very much. Appreciate it.